Welcome back to DXB Today, where tonight we're talking about the old and the new. We're talking about the Zoomers and the Boomers and everything in between. Are they enemies or can we work together? But what else do we have coming up on the show? Ash caught up with the Indian businessman Rizwan Sajan, the founder of Danube Group, to find out how he spends a day in his life. Ash also went down to a Cube real estate development to get insight into Electra, one of the most glamorous projects coming to JVC. And I'm so excited about this talented singer and filmmaker Layla Caliph will be joining us in the studio. Guys, I have to tell you this. So my very first concert ever that I watched at Hard Rock Cafe, way back when I was like preteen, Layla Caliph. Really? Wow. Yes, very first. But of course, you can guys we, were like. Can we ask how long ago? That was? <laughs> no, it was just, I don't know if you were conceived back then yet. <laughs> but what do you remember of the 90s? Uh, I don't remember much of the 90s. I was born in 1993. Um, so I was seven by the time it ended. Oh, so I wasn't having that good a time. Okay, so. I think I think there's two years gap between us. I was born in 95, and I we talked about this earlier because people think I'm Gen Z, but I'm like, no, I'm still like towards the end of the millennials. And I think you, we're all here millennials. So we're all here. millennials. You are one of the, towards the, the, end, the end, I'm the <laughs> very the first millennial. And I'm right slap bang in the yeah, middle. Yeah, there the middle. you go. <laughs> and we are not going to talk about millennials at all today. Exactly. <laughs> what are we talking about, you guys? So yeah, we're talking about the boomers, boomers and everything. But who better to talk to us about everything that is related to all the generations than our guest co-host? Hey guys, I'm Mike Khoury, I'm the CEO of Tactical, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in a few minutes. Mike will be joining us right here in just a bit, but first we get some insightful lessons from Ash as she spends a day with the founder of Danube Properties, Rizwan Sajan. Take a look at this. My name is Rizwan Sajan. I'm the founder and chairman of Danube Group. So I'm sitting with the 1% man himself, Mr. Rizwan Sajan. It's so good to see you. Good to see you, Ashwari, always. <laughs> so for our viewers, I mean, I know why, but for our viewers, tell us why are you known as the 1% man? When we came into the business, all the giants were selling the property. And I said, okay, if I have to sell our properties, I have to come out with something different. And what we realized that 85% of the expats who are staying in Dubai was staying in the rented apartment. Now, how do I make them buy? Because not easy to make them buy because they are all salaried people. Yeah. Uh, the banks don't give them loan on the off-plan property. So we had to think something differently where they can put the savings which they had done in the last four or five years they have worked, which has a down payment, and balance we pay the one percent per month. And that worked formula very well. And as people started knowing, we initially we started only for Dubai and UAE, but now across the world, which you see the rush down. Across the world, people are availing that one person opportunity. What is it like, the whole rags to riches story? Yes, I was born in a middle class family, lower middle class, I would say. Studied in a convent school in India. Um, my dad expired at the age of 16. Then I went to Kuwait. I worked for my uncle. I worked there for eight years and everything was going good for me. And then and I took up a job in Dubai. I worked for one year and then I started my company. I would like to know, how does a typical day in your life start off? So the minute you come into the office, what's the first thing you typically like to do? First thing is the sales yeah. of the yesterday. The first attention goes into it, and who are the salespeople who are doing it. Second thing is my cash flow, that we don't get stuck anywhere. Wow. So selling what we have sold, cash flow, and third one, I'll have a project details. I mean, you clearly run a very, very tight ship. Um, are you one of those people who has to start their day with a cup of coffee or you can't function? <laughs> uh, depends on how I have slept in the night. Sometimes if I feel that I'm a little uh, not up to the mark, then I'll start with the coffee. But that, that's not the necessary point. Okay, it's not important not to you. Um, with how many days would you say you work? Do you work six days a week? Six days for sure. Finally, Rizwan, I mean, you are a man of uh, you know great means and you've been very fortunate enough to build this wonderful empire of yours. If there's one thing that you are yet to achieve or receive in life, what would that be? Building something on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> dream big, dream big. Why not? For sure. Rizwan <laughs> Sajan, it was an absolute Thank pleasure. You. Thank you so much for taking Thank the you. time out. <laughs>
a very impressive person indeed. But enough about Ashwarya, because right now we have our co-host for today, a CEO bridging the gap between traditional agencies and modern challenges through creative storytelling, helping shape the brands of the future. Please welcome to DXB today, Mike Horty from Tactical. Mike, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me, this is great. So the new generation is up and coming, Gen Z. I feel like they are so different from even millennials, even though there's just been a small gap in terms of years. Why do you think that is? Is it technology? That and a lot more. I think before we look at technology, you gotta look at the wider spectrum, right? Things have changed in terms of the way communication has been shared. If you look back hundreds of years ago, a lot of that came through like religious sort of like um, sessions where you know, you know, you'd have people download sort of scripts and ideas, but then from there, industrial revolution came along, and that was sort of uh, democratized a bit more, but still very centralized. And then ultimately, today's sort of new generation is very much about full decentralization. So I can be, I can read, I can write, but I can also um, share and distribute. And with the likes of TikTok, Reddit, etc., you just, yeah, you have the power of distribution at your finger. And there's going to be such a, a big, bigger difference for every generation now. Every time there's a new generation, I think Gen, Gen Alpha is going to be hugely different from Gen. I think I think we're at a pretty like aggressive pace of distribution. So I think we all remember a time, at least I do, when um, I knew when Friends was on by by the minute, right? 7:30 on a Monday, I'd watch Friends. Um, whereas now you've got this on-demand generation who can pick and choose what they consume, when they consume, and if it's not of interest, they just tap and move on. Um, so I don't see how much faster that can go. And you're actually seeing things shift a little bit to more long form as well, more recently. It's just the, the formats are changing from big screen to small screen and potentially even on your face now with goggles. And I wanted to ask you about Tactical because yes. you guys work with the youth. So how, can you tell us more about that as well? Yeah, so we, um, we are a creative and innovation agency. And from the creative side of things, we work with category leaders, um, brands like Spotify, Amazon, etc. And, and a lot of what they're trying to do from an international best in class is connect with local culture. Uh, and where culture is being shaped a lot at the moment is, is, is on these, not just platforms who shape the internet, but also the youth who contribute to it. So mm -hmm. our job is very exciting because we get to connect with the youth yes. um, in terms of what's, what's triggering them, what's getting them excited, um, because it moves at a really fast pace and just making sure that the brands can connect and, um, and show up in delight at the right time. Now, Mike, it's safe to say all of us on this couch right now are all millennials. So we've had the chance to work with boomers, right? We'd have boomers teaching us in the, in the past, but now here you are working with the generation, generation Z. Yeah. How different would you say is the working ethic of uh, the Generation Z versus the boomers? I'd be careful about working ethic because I think like I was mentored by, let's say, an older generation, right? So for me, I learned a lot in person um, and that was great. But I think when you talk about work ethic, you're talking a lot about um, impact, right? And you don't, just being busy doesn't mean you're, you're actually delivering value. Um, so if, I think being careful about what work ethic looks like because it's not about being busy for the sake of being busy, but I think today the, the, the difference when you talk about Zoomers versus Boomers, let's say like Zoomers are living in a virtual world. Um, and it's how do, you, how do you still transfer that learning, those opportunities and, and learn from each other um, in a very different dynamic than what was more traditional sitting within a, in a box, let's say. Now I know you're very connected with the youth, the Zoomers as they're called, the Gen Z, but I'm sure you employ a few. Uh, there's something going around now that Gen Z are lazy, but I okay. think that's been said about every generation. As somebody who employs Gen Z, are they lazy? No, um, I think they're very, they're very different and they've taught me, like a, the younger um, contributors in our team have taught me so much more, um, especially in the last five years. Um, the demands, expectations, but also their contribution is very, very different. Um, they're very um, passionate, very vocal, um, but also the way you like you, you can coach, mentor is very different. It's not the same way that the way I was brought up and the way I was trained, um, let's say, but um, I do feel like I've learned a lot, especially in the last five years, um, when, when the work and, and like workplace dynamics have changed so much, um, to be a lot more virtual. Um, but still try and drive like an objective of how do you build culture, how do you, how do you keep people connected, and, and that's something we're constantly learning from. Do you see the older generation maybe finding it hard to adapt to the change that we have right now, the internet, the AI, everything, yeah. working from home as well? Yeah. Is there a, a hard time for them to adapt to these things? Yeah, look, I mean, for me personally, I'm a people person. I love being around people. Like, yeah. if we were to do this on a call, it'd be a very different dynamic, but I also see the value of having, um, having that as an opportunity. Now, everyone, 
can say that you know the older generation is a bit more resistant to change um, and I think that's a big issue like I think you know you need to keep your eyes open and listen and learn and if you want to if you want to remain young then you got to listen to the young to the youth of today as well. Now you were mentioning earlier how you've learned a lot of things from Gen Z now could you name one thing that boomers and millennials should learn from the Gen Z? Ooh, 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 that's a very Oh, work-life uh -huh. balance. So I'd say they're quite big on the work-life balance, and maybe that's why they're accused of being lazy. No, I think that I think there's a difference in work-life balance. I think you know you you live to no, you work to live, not what live to work, right? Um, and I think with that, where where it becomes a bit more complicated is there's a lot of experience that um, the youth want to be able to share and and and, and, and just generally like have that sense of adventure towards. Um, and the world has opened up, right? And, and making sure that you're living and, and, and being adventurous is, is really important to them. Whereas, let's say, if you look at an older, more experienced generation, maybe they're a little bit more set in their ways, a little bit more um, consistent in, in how they, they live their life. And I think that's probably like where there's a bit of disparity. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean there's not enough to learn or there's not an opportunity to learn from both of them. Speaking of that generation, so the boomers, the Gen Xers, um, I want to know, because we've been talking a lot about the Zoomers, can we still learn from the boomers and the, the, the Gen Xs? Or are they sort of yesterday's news, do you think, in terms no, of business? No, I think, look, truthfully, I think you know, the, the biggest thing there is to listen, right? And I think there's a, there's a big uh, debate's been lost. You know, you're either one side or the other. And I think the opportunity to listen to both is really important. I think if you're, you know, from the boomer side of it, let's call it, um, there's a lot to learn from um, the, the things that have been done before um, and then improve on them. But then from, from the Zoomers generation, there's a lot to, like, like I said, if you want to remain young, you got to listen to the youth. So I think there's, there's, there's sides to win for both, both of them. Well, Mike, we still have a lot of time to tackle all these things. But coming up, we find out how generational media consumption is influencing marketing strategies. So stay with us.